The ordinary public has to queue up outside Portcullis House, but today's witnesses slipped in, avoiding journalists outside. This in a saga where the media and a TV drama has finally spurred action on perhaps the biggest miscarriage of justice in British history. Nonetheless, Fujitsu Europe director Paul Patterson and post office CEO Nick Reid did face MPs. From Patterson, apology and recognition, Fujitsu knew their IT system was faulty from the get-go. Uh, Fujitsu would like to apologise for our part in this appalling miscarriage of justice. We were involved from the very start. We did have bugs and errors in the system and we did help the uh, post office in their prosecutions of the sub-postmasters. For that, we are truly sorry. Did staff in your organisation before 2010 know that there were problems with the Horizon system? So I, I believe that Sir Wynne... So, Simple so, yes or no? Well, I don't, I don't personally know, Chair. I think the inquiry is looking at that very point that you... Well, what's your gut feel? My gut feel would be yes. Patterson then said three so times Fujitsu should contribute to the compensation fund currently paid by you, the taxpayer. Uh, is there a moral obligation, Mr Patterson, for you to contribute? Uh, I think there is a moral obligation for the company to, uh, to contribute. And I think he did not say how much Fujitsu uh, should pay. Also appearing the former MP James R. Bothnot, who told Channel 4 News last week Fujitsu should pay hundreds of millions in compensation. We put that to his former constituent and Fujitsu victim, sub postmistress Jo Hamilton, as she arrived to give evidence. He said that Fujitsu should pay hundreds of millions in compensation. Hundreds of millions is what he said. Do you agree? Um, <laughs> boss. <laughs> yeah, it depends how complicit they are. We'll, but the inquiry has to be left to do its work. Yeah, we won't know until the inquiry is Back inside, the enormity of what Fujitsu and the post office did to people was spelled out. Do you accept that Fujitsu evidence was used to put innocent people in prison? Yes, there was evidence from us. We did have a, um, we were supporting rather the post office in their prosecutions. Um, there was data given from us to them to support those prosecutions, so yes. Post office CEO Nick Reed then made a remarkable admission. Money wrongly forced from the pockets of sub postmasters could have ended up in the large pay packets of post office bosses. It's difficult to say. I mean, I, I, as I say, this, why, why this, is, is, this is pre 2015. I don't have the context of what the. But is it possible? Practice. I mean, I it's mean, possible. Of course it's, it's possible. possible. Absolutely, it's possible. It's possible. MPs repeatedly asked questions but got no answers. Your point of view, when do you think post office staff first knew that remote access to Horizon terminals was possible? I couldn't give you an exact date on that. Why can um, you not answer that question? It is fundamental to this case. Reid told the committee he didn't accept the post office faces a financial liability of £100 million after all this. Then, about a minute later, he agreed this figure was possible. MPs said both Reid and Patterson had failed to answer their questions, showed a lack of curiosity and left the committee frustrated, angry and appalled. <laughs> Oh, wow. The post office is even now accused by the judge leading the separate public inquiry of being obstructive and evasive. Today, two key victims, Alan Bates and Joe Hamilton, portrayed here in the recent ITV drama, gave the select committee their verdict on how the post office is doing right now. Take their weight, even now, for compensation. I've been in the overturn conviction scheme and, and I know that is painfully slow and they have to literally drill into the minute details of everything they think you might be claiming, you know. Um, <laughs> it's almost like you're a criminal all over again. We were given assurances that after 40 working days that cases would receive a first offer. Today it will be the 66th day, working day, in, uh, allowing for Christmas and New Year, that I'm still waiting for my first offer. So Fujitsu and the post office are sorry. There'll be more compensation. They put innocent people in prison and they knew they had a big problem years before admitting it. But as MPs see it, yet more evasion, obstruction and refusal to answer fundamental questions.
Alex Thompson. Well, I'm joined now by Labour's, Labour's Kevan Jones, who has long campaigned for justice for the victims of the Horizon scandal. We heard today at last from Fujitsu. What did you make of what you heard? Well, I welcome uh, Fujitsu's stance today, but I don't think they had much choice because uh, clearly the evidence that came out in court and is now coming out of the inquiry showed that they were complicit in this scandal. I mean, it was extraordinarily blunt in the end, many years too late for victims, they may say. They knew about the errors from the rollout of the system. They provided information to the post office, which helped them prosecute innocent people. Well, it makes you wonder what was going on in Fujitsu when the, this information they were given to the post office was then leading to people's convictions. Why didn't somebody in Fujitsu say, wait a minute, this is wrong? I mean, well, there was no explanation for that. There's no explanation for that, and obviously, before the when we get the then before the public inquiry, I think some of these questions need to be asked. I mean, do you anticipate that some Fujitsu employees, given what they admitted today about the fact that they did give information to the post office, which ended in the wrongful prosecution of many people, do you expect any criminal investigation as a result of that admission today? Well, I think there are some already, and I think yet yeah, the answer to that is yes, there will be. Post Office Minister Kevin Hollenrake repeated today that anyone who contributed to causing harm would contribute to compensation and it would be commensurate with their role in the scandal. Well, on the basis of everything we heard today and what we've heard over the last weeks and months, how much should Fujitsu pay in your view? Well, we don't know how much the compensation is going to actually cost. It's over a billion pounds now. Uh, this is not going to be cheap for Fujitsu and neither should it be. But what sort of proportion, given that they knew about errors from the beginning, it would seem, pretty much the beginning of the rollout, they did give this evidence to the post office, they didn't seem to come out and hold their hands up in the intervening 20 years. I mean, oh. what proportion of, of compensation do you think they should be responsible well, for? Well, I won't get portions, but it's going to be sizable, including, including, I think, uh, you know, not just an apology, but actually trying to make sure all the information is given to the public inquiry. I mean, it is possible, we heard today, that some of the money unfairly paid back by postmasters and postmistresses probably went into the profits of post office. The post office probably paid for huge salaries, bonuses for post office bosses. Well, it's not, it's not an a, a accusation. It did because uh, none of this money was missing. So where did it go to? I've been told by people this week who work at the post office, it went into an, uh, to a suspense account and then went into the profits. I mean, we heard again about the lengthy time people are waiting for compensation. Post Office Minister Kevin Hollenrack said to, today he would like to see cheques in people's banks by August, but he didn't seem entirely convinced that would be the case. Well, I sit along with James Arbuthnot on the uh, advisory body. It's one thing we're pressing for. We've got to get some of the more uh, simpler cases done and, and, and the compensation out to people. Some of the more complex cases will take longer, but they've got to be speed and pace at this now. I mean, it's unbelievable that at this stage, Alan Bates, the, the post the sub postmaster, more or less at the mm. centre of all of this, said he is was waited days and days to be asked three basic questions yeah. by the post well, office. That's the bureaucracy in it, but you know, credit to Alan, Alan's not pleading for any special treatment. But the other problem is, is we've got more cases coming out. Uh, I've had about nearly 15 this week of new cases. So how much this is going to cost in the long run is going to be very interesting. And who pays and, and how who quickly. Pays. Kevin Jones, thank you very much for talking to us this evening.